we said that the electrostatic force exerted by one charged body on another charged body can be represented by F, and F is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. What you see on the page, I want you to listen to me very carefully, I am going to be speaking about the direction of the electrostatic force before we jump into more complex calculations. So remember, if I ask you what is the electrostatic force on charged sphere A, if I ask for a force, remember force is a vector, you need to give me a magnitude and a direction. Force is a vector, so you need to give me a magnitude and a direction. If you leave out one of them, then you get it wrong. You are going to forget about direction. You need to remember now already. Write a massive note in your book. Okay, how do we determine direction with electrostatics? Well, remember I told you it depends on the charge of the object. So like charges will repel, unlike charges attract. So that will determine which way the charged object or the point's charge will move. So it depends on their charges. Now, I want you to listen. I'm going to show you for number one. I say, what is the electrostatic force of Q1 on Q2? So basically, I'm asking, what is the electrostatic force on Q2? I don't have to say of Q1. So the question could be asked like that. What is the electrostatic force on Q2? Then you look at what's going on in the picture. There's Q2. The only other charge present around it is Q1. So Q1 is going to have an impact on Q2. The force I gave you the magnitude of. So this is the magnitude of the force. This is the magnitude. But remember what I told you. You can't tell me that the force, so you can't give me this answer. The force on Q2 is 10 newtons. Why is that not good enough? Because force is a vector. You need magnitude, which I've given you, and direction. So now let's think about direction. Here's Q2. Now I want to know what's the force on Q2. So what's Q2 going to do? Q2 is a positive, and this guy over here is a positive. So will Q2 be attracted to Q1, or will Q2 be repelled away from Q1? Think about it. Positive and a positive, like charges, repel. So Q2 is definitely not going to go to the left. It's going to go to the right. So if I had to draw it on here, the force would be like this. There's the force. So this would be the force of Q1 on Q2. It's the force that Q1 has on Q2. So because of Q1, Q2 is going to the right. So your answer is, the force on Q2 is 10 newtons to the right. If we had to ask, what is the force on Q1, then the force on Q1, where would Q1 go? Because they're both positive, Q1 would go that way. So the force on Q1 would be 10 newtons to the left. Remember, each of them will experience the same magnitude of force, but in the opposite direction. So I give you the magnitude of the force again, and I say, what is the electrostatic force of Q2 on Q1? Here's Q1. Here's Q2. This is a positive. This is a negative. So what do unlike charges do? They attract, right? So unlike charges attract. So what is the electrostatic force of Q2 on Q1? So this on Q1 means that I want to know what Q1 is going to do. So where's Q1 going to go? Q1 is going to go to the right. How did I know that? Because Q1 is going to be attracted to Q2, so he's going to travel towards him. So this is the force that Q2 has on Q1. So my question is that. My answer is force on Q1 is 50 newtons. I gave you the magnitude. To the right. And if you want, you can put in brackets that this is attraction. Okay. And in this case, it was repulsion. Okay, number three. What is the electrostatic force on Q2? So on Q2, see, yeah, I don't even say what is the electrostatic force of Q1 on Q2. I just went ahead and said on Q2. So what's happening to Q2? This is a negative. This is a negative. So where's Q2 going to go? 
well, because they're both unlike, well, because they're both like charges, Q2 is not going to go towards Q1. It'll try and get away from Q1. So it'll go this way. On Q2 is 1.25 newtons to the right. So again, I'm repeating myself. Force is a vector. You need a magnitude and a direction. We're jumping into a slightly more difficult example. So I guess you can put a star here because this is taking it up a level. As you can see, we have three charged objects now. What I need you to understand is that if there are three charged objects, they are all going to affect each other. Okay? So I'm going to say this next part slowly because I need you to understand. So here's Q1. Q1 will be affected by Q2 and Q3. Even though Q3 is far away from it, it'll still feel its effects. Q2 is in the middle. Q2 will be affected by Q1 and Q3. In other words, it'll experience the effects of both. So what that means is Q2 will be attracted to Q1, see they are unlike, and Q2 will experience repulsion because of Q3. In the same way, Q3 is affected by both Q2 and Q1. Even though Q1 is far away from Q3, this guy over here on the end will still feel his effect. Okay, it's just a bigger distance. So let's read the specific question in this case. Question four. What is the net force on Q2? Now, I gave you the, the net force. We're going to have to work it out when we do calculations, but I gave you F net on Q2 is 3.80 newtons. But what I want to show you is Q2. What is the net force on Q2? If I have to show direction, Q2... Where will Q2 move because of Q1? So ignore Q3 for a moment. Q2's over here, Q1's over there. He's positive, he's negative. Q2 will be attracted to Q1. So this will be the force of Q1 on Q2. So to the left, this is the force that Q1 has on Q2. Then... Let's look at Q2 and Q3. Ignore Q1. Q2 is positive. Q3 is positive. So ignoring, ignoring Q1 for a second, will Q2 move towards Q3 or will Q2 move away from Q3? Well, because they're both positive, we know that like charges repel, so Q2 will want to move this way. Okay, so this will be the force, the purple will be the force of Q3 on Q2. So the force that Q3 has on Q2 will be also to the left. So my net force, because they're both going left, I don't know the exact magnitudes of each because I don't have uh, values or distances, but basically because they're both going left, I can say the net force, on Q2 will be 3.80 newtons left. I know that. I can say that because I know that both of them are, are affecting Q2 and pulling it left, essentially. Okay, let's do two more. So what is the net electrostatic force on Q2? Now, this one is a little bit more tricky. I can't actually give you an overall direction. You'll see why now. So we look at Q2. Q2 is a negative. Ignore this one for a second. This is a negative. That is a negative. So we want to know on Q2. So we're looking at Q2. This is our charge object of interest. So what is Q2 going to do because of Q1? Q2 is positive. Q1 is positive. So Q2 is going to try and run away from Q1. So the orange arrow is the force of Q1 on Q2. It's the force that Q1 has on Q2. Okay, now we ignore Q1. We say, okay, here's Q2, my charge of interest. It's got a negative, 
and this one is a positive. So, which way will Q2 want to move? Q2 will be attracted to Q3. Do you see? Because opposite charges attract, so that arrow will also point this way. Because of Q3, Q2 will move that way. So the net electrostatic force, because they're both pointing to the right, I don't need values to tell me. I just say the net force is 50 newtons to the right. Last one. Now, this one, we are talking about what is the net force on Q3. So on Q3, Q3 is my charge of interest. So I look at what is Q3 going to do. Let's first think about Q3 and Q2. Q3 is positive. 2 is also positive. We know that they repel. So because of Q2, Q3 is going to go to the right. It's the force of Q2 on Q3. Then ignore Q2 now. We've, we've sorted that out. Now we're going to look at Q3 and Q1. Positive and a negative. We know that those attract. So because of Q1, Q3 is actually going to want to move to the left. The force of Q1 on Q3. Now, grade 11s, I hope this makes sense to you. I can't write an answer here because I know that the net force is 10 newtons, but I don't have magnitudes for this force and this force. I don't know which one won in the end. So if this was maybe 60 newtons and this was 50 newtons, then this one would be 10 newtons more. So 60 and 50, so I'm pulling, it's just think about it like this. I'm pulling with 60 this way. I'm pulling with 50 this way. Okay, the difference is 10. And it'll be 10 to the left because this one will be bigger. But I don't know. Maybe this one could be 60 and this one could be 50. Okay, then it would be 10 newtons to the right. I don't have enough information here. But all I wanted to show you with these small examples is how to determine the direction. Okay.